In this video, I'll be doing a review of the long-awaited release of Elementary OS Luna. Now, this distro has been in development for some time, and there's a good reason for that, because they got their own custom desktop and window manager, and those are called Pantheon and Gala, respectively. And they've also got some of their own custom applications that have been tweaked to suit their desktop style, and they've gone and included a file manager, text editor, email client, music player, calendar, and a tweaked version of Midori. Now these all look very similar. They've got their own same styling with the little cog on the right hand side that allows you to tweak some of the settings on the application. And they've also got the same settings there for the how the information is displayed, be it whether in thumbnail, list, or column format. Now it's a very nice effort they've gone to there and it shows continuity throughout the distro. Now it's based on Ubuntu 12.04, and I have to say the speed is more like what I'd expect out of an Arch-based distro. <laughs> it is ridiculous. It doesn't mean it's exceptionally lightweight though, I'd say it's more of a mid-weight system. Well I still have System Monitor open here, so you can see that without anything much open we have 450 meg of RAM in use, and it's using not much there on CPU, I don't know, it's just ticking over probably running the System Monitor. You've got the maximize button on the right hand side and the close button on the left hand side. It takes a little bit of getting used to that because it's a bit uh, of an unusual layout. So the behavior on the system really. Now this is a totally new desktop than most people would be used to. So what if I just open a few things up and you can see the responsiveness of all this. It's just well, ridiculously fast. Now it does have multiple desktops available. Now to set, start those off you press Windows key and S you can see that appears there at the bottom. You can select the desktop and it goes across to it. Now if I just go back there and you can drag the icons across. So now Scratch is on the second desktop and Calculator and Archive Manager on the first. Using Alt and Tab you can see the selection appears there on the bar at the bottom of the screen. There's that called Plank I think. I'm not definite on that, so let me just double check in Synaptic. Yes, it is called Plank. Now I can't totally minimise the application, can I? Unless you click on its icon at the bottom of the screen. Right, the other shortcuts, Windows key and tab takes you across a desktop. So that's it really, you just got Windows key and S to start that lot off the bottom, Windows key and tab to move between desktops. It's not too dissimilar to other distros. Take a close look at the system settings. So on desktop, we've got the various different wallpapers available. The dock, that has different behaviours on it. So you can set the icon size. You can set the hide mode, so don't hide. Now if I move an application down, uh, the dock stays there all the time. One that's now missing from the Unity launcher is the Intelligent Hide. Ah, so cover the dock up and it, it disappears. So that's quite a nice feature. Auto Hide was the one I had selected, so it stays disappeared and then when you hover the mouse over it, it reappears. And Hide on Maximize, that's another one. Uh, so if I, let's just see, Maximize Application. So that's good, you've got a few different choices on how you want the dock to behave. So some other features, uh, you've got the arrow snap type effect, so if I put an application across to the right hand side it takes up half the screen, same for that. So let's just open Midori, we'll just take something else across there, yep. so just showing that you do have the snap effect between applications. You've also got, if you want to maximise the application, just drag it to the top. So that's all pretty standard behaviours there. Back to system settings, you can change the hot corners on the corner of desktops, but by default they don't do anything. Chain, you could choose between any one of those. Look a bit closer at the music player. So you can have the different layouts here of uh, showing the album covers, listing the tracks, or showing it in columns, so you can choose between various different selections at the top here. And there's the menu on the right hand side if you want to rescan the music or go full screen or choose some different preferences there. 
In fact, what is lacking from a lot of applications is the option to go full screen. I can't really see that on any of the non-elementary applications. One last thing to talk about is the behavior on the dock. So you can drag and drop the icons into different places. You can also drag icons down from the application menu on the top left hand side. Uh, so let's find one that's not in there. Uh, let's go for, what should we have? Oh, let's put the system monitor down there, should we? There you go. That's all good. It behaves very nicely. It's not too difficult to use. Lastly, let's we'll just take a quick look at what applications it comes with because the list is very short. Under accessories, it's just the archive manager, calculator, scratch text editor, and a screenshot. Graphics, Shotwell photo manager, and simple scan. Internet, empathy for instant messenger, Geary email client, and Midori for the web browser. Office, there is no Office application on here. It's just the basics of calendar, document viewer, and Geary email again. Sound and video, Totem movie player, and the noise music player. System tools, we've got files, which is similar to the later versions of Nautilus, Software Center, Terminal and Update Manager, Synaptic, and System Monitor I installed, just to test out the system. Now here's what I thought of Elementary OS Luna. So it's fairly easy to use, although you've got to install a lot of the applications that you want, but they've given you all the basics to get you going. It's easy to install, the styling, it's pretty good. Um, but nothing too special, not too glossy. At the boot up speed, it's about 8 seconds in VirtualBox and I reckon a sub 5 seconds is likely on real hardware, provided you've got say a solid state disk and a reasonable speed processor. Responsiveness is very quick, didn't find any bugs, selection of pre-installed applications, as I mentioned there it's sparse, you've got to install well, what you want. A reasonable number of applications available, haven't included any extra repositories, so you've just got the Ubuntu 1204 selection. And yeah, it comes in both 32 and 64 bit. So, the good points uh, it's an uh, exceptionally fast mid weight distro that would suit a more advanced user, or a more intermediate user perhaps. Certainly not a new user, because you, as I mentioned there, you've got to know what applications you want. The bad points though, I think it could have done with some more customized applications. So say like, I don't know, a video player, a torrent client, you know, just those off the top of my head, a couple there that it could have done with, would have really sold the OS. Uh, the pre-installed kernel now is very old, it could cause problems with newer hardware. Certainly I do believe the Ubuntu 1204 kernel couldn't cope with the Nvidia 600 series of graphics cards, so you would have to update that but it's not that difficult. There's a couple of videos on my channel how to do that. And it may not be Windows 8 Secure Boot UEFI compatible. Not certain on that one, but I don't see any mention of it actually being so, because I don't think it's been 2204 is. Maybe UEFI compatible, but not UEFI Secure Boot, which are two different things. Anyway, overall, I've given it 90%. So thanks for watching. See you later.